Periplaneta Americana measures 3.4 to 5.3 centimeters in length. The adult male of this species has wings extending beyond its abdomen. The body of a cockroach is dorsoventrally flattened and is covered in a hard, brown, chitinous exoskeleton. The entire body is segmented and divisible into the head, thorax and abdomen. In each segment, the exoskeleton has hardened plates called sclerites, which are joined to each other by a thin, flexible, articular membrane called the arthrodial membrane. The sclerites on the dorsal side are called tergites and on the ventral side they are called sternites. The head of a cockroach is triangular and is attached to the thorax by a short flexible neck. It is held at right angles to the long axis of the body. In fact, the head is formed by the fusion of six segments and is covered by a number of plates which constitute the head capsule. This capsule bears a pair of large compound eyes. It also bears a pair of long slender antennae that arise from two membranous sockets. These antennae have sensory receptors which help monitor the surroundings. The anterior end of the head bears mouth parts, which are of biting and chewing type. The mouth parts consist of an upper lip or labrum, a pair of mandibles and maxillae, and a lower lip or labium. Additionally, cockroaches also have a hypopharynx which acts as a tongue and lies in front of the labium. Following the head is the thorax, which consists of three segments, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. Each thoracic segment bears a pair of long, jointed legs. Moreover, the mesothorax and metathorax bear a pair of wings. The mesothoracic wings or the forewings are called tegmina. These wings are dark, opaque and leathery and cover the hind wings at rest. While the hind wings are thin, transparent and membranous and are used in flight. Following the thorax is the abdomen which consists of 10 segments. Although the male and female cockroaches have an equal number of abdominal segments, the female's abdomen is broader than that of the male. In females, the seventh sternum is boat shaped and together with the eighth and ninth sterna forms a genital pouch which contains the female gonopore, spermatical pores, and collateral glands. In males, the genital pouch lies towards the end of the abdomen and contains the dorsal anus, the ventral male genital pore and the gonopophysis. The genital pouch is surrounded dorsally by the ninth and tenth dirga and ventrally by the ninth sternum. The tenth segment of both male and female cockroaches bears a pair of jointed filamentous anal cerci that function as sense organs. Additionally, male cockroaches bear a pair of short anal styles which are absent in females. These features help distinguish between a male and a female cockroach. Thus, the morphological study of a cockroach includes features such as its color, shape, size and external organs. 
Although a cockroach may look like a simple small insect, anatomically it is quite complex. Let's take a look at the anatomical features of a cockroach, such as the alimentary canal and the blood vascular, respiratory, excretory, nervous and reproductive systems. The alimentary canal is present in the body cavity and is divided into foregut, midgut and hindgut. The entire foregut is lined with cuticle and consists of a mouth which leads into a short tubular pharynx that continues into a narrow tubular esophagus. The esophagus opens into a large sac-like structure called a crop, which stores food. The crop is followed by a small conical gizzard or proventriculus, which grinds the food particles. The transverse section of the gizzard shows an outer thick layer of circular muscles and an inner thick layer of cuticle, which forms six chitinous teeth. At the junction of the foregut and midgut is a ring of six to eight tubules called hepatic or gastric cica, which secrete digestive juice. Similarly, at the junction of the midgut and hindgut is a ring of numerous filamentous yellow-colored malpighian tubules, which function as excretory organs. The midgut is followed by the hindgut which is broader and is divided into ilium, colon, and rectum. The rectum opens to the exterior through a small aperture called the anus. The anatomical study also includes the blood vascular system. Cockroaches have an open blood vascular system with poorly developed blood vessels that open into a hemocele or open body space. The visceral organs situated in this hemocele are immersed in blood or hemolymph, which consists of colorless plasma and hemocytes. In a longitudinal section of the insect, you will see a long muscular tube lying along the mid-dorsal axis of the body. This muscular tube is the heart, which is differentiated into funnel-shaped chambers with ostea on either side. These insects also possess sinuses or cavities in their body. The hemolymph from these sinuses enters the heart through ostea and is pumped back into the sinuses anteriorly. The respiratory system also forms a part of the anatomical study of a cockroach. This system consists of a network of trachea that opens to the exterior through ten pairs of spiracles which are located on the lateral side of the body. The opening of these spiracles is regulated by sphincters. The tracheas are further divided into thin tracheoles, which supply oxygen to all the parts of the body. Gaseous exchange in these tracheoles takes place through diffusion. The anatomical study also includes the excretory system. In cockroaches, malpighian tubules situated at the junction of the midgut and hindgut serve as excretory organs. Each tubule is lined with ciliated and glandular cells which absorb nitrogenous wastes from the body and convert them into uric acid. This uric acid is then excreted through the hindgut. As cockroaches excrete uric acid, they are known as uricotelic animals. Apart from malpighian tubules, the fat body, nephrocytes and uricose glands also help in excretion. The nervous system is also a part of the anatomical study. In the cockroach, this system consists of a series of ganglia in each segment, which is attached to a ventral nerve cord and a brain. There are three thoracic ganglia and six abdominal ganglia. In the head, the supraesophageal ganglion represents the brain, which supplies nerves to the antennae and the compound eyes. Did you know that if you cut off the head of a cockroach, 
It can survive for almost a week. Well, this is because the head holds a small part of the nervous system, while a large part of the system is present in the thorax and abdomen. Besides a well-developed nervous system, cockroaches also have many sensory organs, such as antennae, eyes, maxillary, and labial palps, and anal cerci. The head bears a pair of large compound eyes, and each eye consists of about 2,000 hexagonal armatidia. These armatidia form a mosaic vision of an object with low resolution. This vision is also known as nocturnal vision. Finally, let's learn about the reproductive system. Cockroaches are unisexual with well-developed male and female reproductive systems. The male reproductive system consists of two testes, which lie on the lateral sides of the fourth to sixth abdominal segments. From each testis arises a thin vas deferens. The two vasa deferentia run posteriorly and open into the ejaculatory duct through a seminal vesicle. The ejaculatory duct opens into the male gonopore situated below the anus. At the anterior end of the ejaculatory duct, in the sixth and seventh abdominal segments, is a mushroom-shaped accessory reproductive gland consisting of small and long tubules. The secretion from this gland nourishes sperm and helps in spermatophore formation. In cockroaches, the male gonopophysis, or phalomere, represents the external genitalia. These phalomeres are asymmetrical structures made up of chitin and surround the male gonopore. Sperm is stored in seminal vesicles and form spermatophores, which are discharged during copulation. The female reproductive system consists of two large ovaries which lie on the lateral sides of the second to sixth abdominal segments. Each ovary consists of eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles containing beaded strings of developing ova. From each ovary arises an oviduct, which joins to form a single common oviduct or vagina. The vagina opens into the genital chamber. In the sixth segment, a pair of spermatica is present, which also opens into the genital chamber. During copulation, sperm is transferred through spermatophores. After copulation, the female cockroach secretes a purse-shaped capsule called an earthica, which contains the fertilized eggs. The earthica is a dark, reddish to blackish-brown colored capsule, which is about 8 mm long. The female lays about 9 to 10 earthica in cracks or crevices with high humidity and near a food source. Each earthica contains about 14 to 16 eggs. Interestingly, in Periplaneta americana, the development of the insect is porometabolous, which means that development takes place through the nymphal stage. A nymph looks quite similar to an adult, and it molts around 13 times before it turns into an adult. Though the second last nymphal stage has wing pads, only adult cockroaches have wings. We've just studied the anatomical features of a cockroach, such as the alimentary canal and the blood vascular, excretory, nervous, and reproductive systems. With the onset of the monsoon, it is common to hear croaking sounds. These sounds are made by male frogs to attract females as it's their breeding season. Frogs are tailless animals that live both on land and in fresh water. There are about 4,000 species of frogs worldwide, but they are usually found in tropical and subtropical regions. 
India too is home to many species, the most common being Rana tigrina. Did you know these amphibians can change their body temperature according to the temperature of the environment? This is because frogs are cold-blooded animals or poikilotherms. In fact, when the temperature is extremely hot or cold, they take shelter in deep burrows. Frogs undergo hibernation in winter and estivation in summer and are therefore not visible during these seasons. Frogs are also known to camouflage themselves according to their surroundings to hide from predators. The dorsal side of their body is olive green with dark irregular spots, while the ventral side is pale yellow. This coloration of the skin makes the frog inconspicuous to predators and is also known as mimicry. The frog's skin is smooth and slippery due to the presence of mucus, which makes it difficult for the prey to grasp it. Additionally, the skin is moist and helps in the diffusion of respiratory gases. Did you know that a frog doesn't drink water but absorbs it through its skin? The body of a frog is divided into two regions, head and trunk. There is no neck and tail. The head bears a wide semicircular mouth above which is a pair of small nostrils. A little behind the nostrils is a pair of large bulging eyes covered by a transparent, nictitating membrane which protects the eyes while in water. Behind the eyes is a pair of membranous tympanum which receives sound signals. The head is attached to the trunk, which is a broad structure that usually shows a hump in the sitting posture. It bears two pairs of limbs, forelimbs and hindlimbs, that help to swim, walk, leap and burrow. The hindlimbs have five digits and are larger and muscular than the forelimbs, which have four digits. Moreover, the long digits of the hind limbs are connected by a web that helps to swim. In frogs, the sexes are separate, and certain features help to easily distinguish between a male and a female frog. Male frogs possess two vocal sacs on the lower side of their throat, which are used for croaking. They also have a copulatory pad on the first digit of their forelimbs. Both these organs are absent in female frogs. Although frogs are undesirable in residential areas, they are beneficial to farmers as they eat insects and protect crops. They serve as an important link in the food chain and food web in the ecosystem and thus maintain an ecological balance. However, in recent years, the population of frogs has been declining due to various human activities. Frogs have well-developed organ systems. Their digestive, respiratory, vascular, excretory, nervous and reproductive systems are held in a body cavity. Let's take a look at each system in detail. The digestive system consists of an alimentary canal and digestive glands. Frogs, being carnivores, the length of the intestine is reduced. This makes the alimentary canal short. The alimentary canal begins with a wide, semicircular mouth that opens into a buccal cavity 
which leads into a pharynx. The pharynx continues into a short tubular esophagus. The esophagus is followed by the stomach, which continues as the intestine, rectum, and finally opens into the cloaca. Frogs possess two main digestive glands, the liver and pancreas. The liver secretes bile, which is stored in the gallbladder, while the pancreas produces pancreatic juice containing digestive enzymes. A frog uses its sticky, bilobed tongue to catch prey or food. As the food passes through the stomach, it is partially digested by hydrogen chloride or HCl and gastric juices secreted by the walls of the stomach. This partially digested food, called chyme, then passes into the duodenum which receives pancreatic juices and bile through a common bile duct. The pancreatic juices digest carbohydrates and proteins, while the bile emulsifies fat present in the food. The digestion of food is completed in the intestine, where it is absorbed by numerous finger-like projections called villi and microvilli. The undigested solid waste passes through the rectum and is finally ingested through the cloaca. The anatomical study also includes the respiratory system. Interestingly, frogs respire in water and on land in two different ways. In water, the frog's skin functions as the respiratory organ and the gaseous exchange takes place through diffusion. This is called cutaneous respiration. On land, a frog respires through the buccal cavity, skin and lungs. During respiration, air is drawn into the buccal cavity through the nostrils and is forced into the lungs. This type of respiration through the lungs is called pulmonary respiration. Did you know that during estivation and hibernation, frogs respire only through their skin? The vascular system also forms a part of the anatomical study and consists of a well-developed blood vascular system and a lymphatic system. The blood vascular system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood, while the lymphatic system consists of lymph, lymph channels, and lymph nodes. The heart is situated in the upper part of the body cavity and consists of three chambers, two atria and one ventricle and is covered by the pericardium. The right atrium is connected to the sinus venosus, which receives blood through the major veins called vena cava. The oxygenated blood is then pumped into the ventricle, which opens into a sac-like structure called the conus arteriosus. after which it is distributed to different parts of the body by arteries or the arterial system. Deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body is collected by veins or the venous system and is pumped into the heart. Frogs also have a hepatic portal system and renal portal system. In the hepatic portal system, veins are connected to the liver and the intestine. While in the renal portal system, veins are connected to the kidney and lower parts of the body. 
The blood consists of plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. While the lymph lacks red blood cells and a few proteins. As the heart beats, blood circulates various substances such as gases, nutrients, and hormones to different parts of the body. The anatomical study also includes the excretory system. This system consists of a pair of kidneys, ureters, the urinary bladder, and cloaca. The kidneys are dark red, bean-shaped structures situated on either side of the vertebral column. Each kidney consists of several nephrons and gives rise to a ureter. In male frogs, the two ureters function as a urinogenital duct and open into the cloaca. However, in female frogs, the ureters and the oviduct open separately into the cloaca. Towards the ventral side of the rectum is a thin-walled urinary bladder which also opens into the cloaca. The nephrons in the kidneys absorb the excretory wastes from the blood and convert them into urea. As frogs excrete urea, they are called ureotelic animals. The endocrine glands and the nervous system are also a part of the anatomical study. In frogs, the chemical coordination of different organs is brought about by hormones that are secreted by the endocrine glands. These include pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pineal body, pancreatic islets, adrenals, and gonads. The nervous system in frogs includes the central, peripheral, and autonomic nervous systems. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of cranial and spinal nerves. And the autonomic nervous system consists of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The brain is enclosed in a cranium and is divided into the forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. The forebrain consists of olfactory lobes, paired cerebral hemispheres and an unpaired diencephalon. The midbrain bears a pair of optic lobes and the hindbrain consists of the cerebellum and medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata passes out through the foramen magnum and continues into the spinal cord, which is enclosed in the vertebral column. The brain gives rise to ten pairs of cranial nerves, which provide external information to the brain. Besides a well-developed nervous system, frogs also possess different sense organs such as sensory papillae, taste buds, nasal epithelium, eyes, and a tympanum with internal ears. However, only the eyes and internal ears are well-organized structures, while others are cellular aggregations around nerve endings. The eyes are simple and are situated in the orbit of the skull, and behind each eye is a tympanum that serves as a hearing and a balancing organ. Finally, let's learn about the reproductive system. Frogs are unisexual animals with well-developed male and female reproductive systems. The male reproductive system consists of two yellowish ovoid testes, which are attached to the upper part of the kidneys by the mesochium. From each testis arise 
five to six bassa deferentia that enter the kidneys and open into the bidder's canal. The vasa deferentia finally join the urogenital duct and open into the cloaca. The cloaca is a small median chamber that serves as a single opening that passes out fecal matter, urine and sperm. The female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries. However, unlike the testes, the ovaries are not connected to the kidneys. From each ovary arises an oviduct, which separately opens into the cloaca. Interestingly, a mature female frog can lay about 2,500 to 3,000 ova at a time. After copulation, the eggs are fertilized externally in the presence of water. These eggs develop into tadpoles, which undergo metamorphosis to form adult frogs. As the life cycle of frogs has a larval or tadpole stage, development is indirect. We've just studied the anatomical features of the frog, such as the digestive, vascular, respiratory, excretory, nervous and reproductive systems.